In today's video, I'm actually taking you through six different projects that I've done. Um, a couple of them I've actually kept for staging in my own home and I've sold the rest of them. So I've put the what I paid for them on Marketplace and the list price, uh, what they sold for in all of these clips. So some of them is just music and watching the kind of the process and some of them are like more full tutorials showing you what I'm using. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the end. This first piece is probably a favorite for so many of my clients, um, but too bad I ended up keeping it for myself. Had I listed it, I would have done in probably the $6.95 range, and yes, it would sell. There's always a buyer. So um, check out the process on this. I just, it was very simple. Tape the doors so we didn't get... For this project, I used Annie Sloan Old Ochre, which is more of a creamy white versus a true white. And this little roller was actually really helpful for this project. So um, I don't use it a lot, um, but for this one with the long kind of planks, it was really super helpful. I did my faux staining technique on the doors. So with that technique, you always start with a layer of chalk paint. And I do have um, my faux staining workshop videos are available in the playlist if you want to see what this technique is like so as you can see i got this really pretty light stain color on the top and on the doors that um, matches the decor in my home so i absolutely love how these turned out Next up is the Pottery Barn dupe. Now actually, somebody did comment and say this is actually a Pottery Barn table, but I don't know that for sure. There was no markings on it, so I'm gonna call it a dupe. Um, this one was very, very simple. All I did was sand that cherry color, but I left the cherry on the inside so I could get the two-tone. And um, the wood underneath was a really, really beautiful light wood, which took the stain that I put on, special walnut from Minwax, it took so beautifully. It didn't turn yellow or orange. It just had this really beautiful brown tone with a cherry inside. And all I did with that one is staged it and that one sold for $2.25. These were definitely a hot freaking mess. I only paid $10 for them, and um, you can see why. It looks like they probably should have gone in the dumpster. However, I gave them a lot of love, and this project sold for, I believe, $160. Um, it probably wasn't worth that small of a profit for all the work that I put into this one, so that's why I have the flip for profit cheat sheet available if you click in the link below. I kind of go over what to look for and what to avoid. I probably would have avoided these had I known the condition that they were in, but 
ultimately they actually turned out really cute and um, of, of course attracted the right buyer. So let's kind of get into how I tackled this project. The first thing I noticed is that all of these little, um, I wanted to call them rubber. They're not rubber, they're um, leather. <laughs> Why am I confusing rubber with leather? Anyways, I noticed that they were all secured with these little pins and I had to take this little tool and just kind of wiggle them out to get these off. They were such a huge, huge pain in the butt, but ultimately I got them all off and we replaced these with some really super cute vintage brass handles. So stay tuned to see what those look like at the end. Okay, so now that all of these stupid handles are off, I'm gonna go ahead and just sand the little tops of the baskets, which all, honestly was another huge pain in the butt. It was like, what was I even thinking with this project? Another thing is that I actually had to go over these with kills because they just were in such bad shape. I just wanted to make sure that um, they were going to be clean and fresh for the buyer. So I took the rotary sander to all of the little edges. Just the front edge is all I needed to sand on these because that's the only thing that's visible. And it actually turned out pretty cute. I actually at first did a little sand as you can see on the basket trying to keep kind of that natural look but i actually ended up spray painting the baskets a gray chalk paint because once i kind of got done with them i still didn't like that they were just too brown too ugly so i did a gray spray paint on them which you'll see in the after picture at the end Next, I got to work on just sanding the top. These kind of had that, you know, darker cherry color. And my goodness, it took a while for me to get this off. I don't know if I was using the wrong, the wrong sandpaper or what. But um, anyways, I got it off and some of it was a little bit warped. Like you can almost see the edge of that table kind of like tilts up a little bit, but oh well, it is what it is. And I was so frustrated with this project at this point. <laughs> I just wanted to get it over with and just disclose in the actual ad without having to fix this top it just didn't think it was worth fixing the actual wood on the top so um, showing pictures and sharing with potential buyers any flaws is key so they know what they are getting you know when they come to look at it The wood underneath is actually really pretty, just a really pretty light color. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of stain on the top and on those little front parts of the baskets um, and just really keep it simple. I'm not gonna do the faux staining on this. I'm just going to give it an actual nice um, light stain on the top. So 
So here you can see I've actually painted the baskets a light gray chalk paint, which I thought turned out so much cuter than that kind of brown color. And then just staged this piece. There you can see kind of that edge that was a little bit warped and made sure to put that in my listing. But this one did not actually sit for long and went for $160 on Marketplace. And the girl was so excited to have And so what I'm thinking is that I actually really like this darker wood. I think might work really well with the Annie Sloan. So I might leave the doors. I might not even have to paint the doors with the faux staining unless I want to keep it for myself, but I am going to try to flip this one, I think. So that's what you need to stay tuned for at the very end. I'm going to show you the uh, flipping for profit cheat sheet, what I paid for this piece and what I'm going to list it for and what I will actually sell it for. So you'll have to stay tuned for all of that. But I'm gonna get started on just the painting. I'm going to basically paint all of this on the side. I'm gonna take the doors off. So I'll start with that. There's a couple of glass shelves in here and there's actually lighting in here. So that's kind of cool. But I'm gonna paint all of the interior as well. The interior, um, you know, of course the back is like the cardboard backing. So that's not super awesome, but it does have this really cute drawer with already really super cute handles on it. Apparently it doesn't want to slide out. This one does have an adapter to plug it in because even though this is an Ikea piece, this one was made in Europe. So um, in order to use it, it has an adapter. But it is a super, super cute piece. I'm really excited to see the transformation on this one. So stay tuned. All right, so these are the products that I'm using today. So the exterior and interior, actually, the only thing that's gonna be wood stained are the doors, the surround of the glass. So I'm gonna use Annie Sloan chalk paint, old ochre is the color. And I'm gonna try this actual chalk paint brush today. These, none of this is sponsored. Um, I'm just trying out products and showing you what it is. And then I'm gonna use special walnut stain on the doors after I have done a light layer of chalk paint. So I'm gonna show you the faux staining technique. So make sure you stay tuned all the way so you can see how this goes. Okay, so for this project, I am going to just remove the doors, take off all of the hardware, and um, then I'll tape off the doors with just regular painter's tape. Uh, just to protect the glass because we're going to do the faux staining technique on the doors and then the rest of the whole cabinet is going to be um, Annie Sloan Old Ochre except for maybe on the top. Once again, here I go struggling using hand tools. My drill would not fit in here to get these doors, get the screws out. So I had to just individually get these out. One Okay, so I got both of the doors off. Now I just need to go in and remove the glass shelves and the other shelves, just take them all out. I actually might, I've been really enjoying this like two-tone look, not just on the doors, but the reason I usually paint the interior creamy or white is because you can see in it a lot better when there's things in there on display. But I think what I'm gonna do is leave the interior and the shelves this darker color and see if I like the, the two-tone look when I get it done, and if not, I'll go back in and paint the inside, but I think I might actually just leave these doors this original color because it is a really pretty darker wood. Um, so I don't know, we'll see, but I'm gonna get to removing the rest of the stuff, and then we will see what happens. <laughs> I'm not sure how I missed this little piece earlier, so that kind of sucks, but um, I still think it's gonna be super cute. And when it's chalk painted, I'm just gonna make it look kind of distressed on that corner. I don't really think you'll be able to tell. But when I list this, I will disclose it because I like to fully disclose 
any flaws in my pieces so there's no surprises. And then as you can see on the back, I'm not gonna messy up the cardboard backing. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm not gonna paint it or anything. So when I'm doing these edges, I will make sure, I'll just kind of tape it off because I just want it to stay really clean on the back, so. All right guys, I'm gonna get painting. So I've never actually used one of these like round chalk paint brushes, so I'm kind of excited to try this. Versus, I usually just use like a regular, like a cut-in brush, like a purdy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give this a shot, see how I like it. Okay, so you guys, if you don't have one of these, again, not sponsored, but I've had this thing for that long. Like you can see, it's so well used. I bought it from my daughter's, um, you know, fundraiser and from when she was in like third grade and now she's almost a senior. So it's lasted a long time, but I like these little flat heads on it because that um, is what I used to like open up my paint. We'll just give this a little stir. And I don't know what's going on with the Annie Sloan lids, but they changed something and they are extremely hard to get off. So if <laughs> you have an Annie Sloan lid tip, like, or you know Annie Sloan and her team and you can tell her to change back to the old lids, that would be great. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna give it a little stir. Nice and creamy. This chalk paint is very thick, so I sometimes will water it down, but today I'm just gonna go straight for it. Just do the exterior and um, see how it works out. I've never really watered it down unless I'm doing the faux staining technique, so if I end up doing the faux staining technique on those doors, I'll show you like how much water I would put in it and how to water it down if you do that. years ago but how can i forget we were 16 up all night love and heartbreak was our life we got drunk and smoked your dad's cigarettes dreamt of a life in a big town skyscrapers and neon lights mm -hmm. i still think of you And clearly I've taped off the doors, so I have decided to do the faux staining technique. I just cannot hang with the dark wood. So let's get these lightened up and I'm probably going to keep this one. And of course I had the perfect spot in my home, so I kept this one. If I were to list it, it would probably be in the 595, 600 range. Today I am working on this coffee table and two end tables, kind of a traditional style. I'm gonna faux stain the top. I did a quick spray with um, just Magnolia True White paint. And I'm not gonna distress these. I'm gonna leave them as is and just faux stain the top. Put a cute little handle on it and call it a day. So here's what they look like before. They were just kind of that ugly, gross, dated brown with gross brass handles. Sorry if you like this style, but blah.
using the sprayer on these was a lifesaver. This, I think, was the first time using the sprayer. And I've just been honestly waiting for nice weather so I could go outside and do this. I think I need a spraying um, area, like in my garage or something. Like, I think if you think I should have my own studio where I can spray, you should comment below so I can let my husband know that it's time. This is very typical. I just had my brush in hand that I'm gonna use and now it's literally, I can't find it. Here it is. Really, just kind of pour some on. Oh, it's so scary. No, it's not scary. Just brush it on. Pour a little more. Brush it on. This is so forgiving too because you can just kind of work with it until you get it the way that you want it. It does take a little while to dry because you're not, um, you know, wiping it off. You're just letting it sit. So it gets really tacky, it's sticky, and it takes, I'm gonna say a good 24 to 48 hours before it's totally dry. So do not try and stage your piece until it has been sitting for a while. See how easy this is though? I'm gonna get a full coverage and I'll show you guys what it looks like. A little bit more. Whoops, that was too much, but that's fine. And if for some reason your color does not turn out the way that you wanted it to, which does happen sometimes, um, you can just paint over it once it's completely dry. I don't even sand it down. You can, but um, I just paint over it with white paint again. The last thing that I had to do on these was I added these little half moon poles, which I think turned out super cute, and then just staged it. I just brought these into the house and gave them a cute little staging and listed these for $2.25. They did not sit long. They had a buyer right away. Next up is one of my all-time faves. I honestly would have kept this piece if I had a spot for it, but... Um, the buyer was extremely happy to have it. So it's always fun to see um, the excitement when people come to pick things up that you know you've just poured your heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears into. So um, this was the vintage spice trunk, which I believe the full tutorial or clips of it, it was a short clip actually, is on the channel if you want to see that, if you wanna see just this one project. So with this one, I just removed all of the doors. I knew for sure that I wanted to handles and probably I wasn't sure what I was going to replace them with but I ended up of course going with vintage brass because I'm obsessed with vintage brass and I think it looks so cute on like everything that I've done so far so um, while it's trendy I'll probably continue to use it this piece though oh my word I spent so many hours sanding down I, I did not want to do faux staining I wanted to do a custom stain on this so I sanded it down from head to toe other than the inside I left the darker brown because you know me with my two tones I love the dark inside I think it just gives it an element of surprise when you open it up and it just looks so custom and so cool you'll see at the end how these drawers turn out. I did the um, sanding on just the fronts, but of course, of to keep that two-tone look, I left the insides just their normal color, which isn't quite cherry. Um, the inside of the back was a lot darker than the inside of the drawers, but uh, when I get to the after pictures at the end, you'll see how cool these actually turned out. They just look amazing. And here I go again with my cute little vintage brass poles. I'm actually gonna link these 
in the uh, description below because they were super, super cheap on Amazon and they just totally tied this piece together and made it look so amazing. So here's the quick before and after with the faux staining, actually not faux staining, this is the custom stain. This took some elbow grease to get this really cool light color and oh my gosh, it just turned out so amazing. I'm in love with this piece. Those are some of my favorite pieces that I've done. There's so many more to come. If you want to see anything specific, please comment below uh, with what you'd like me to seek out on Marketplace and I'll do a full tutorials on different pieces that you guys are interested in seeing me take from trash to treasure, whatever you want to call it. So, and of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.